All right, everyone. So for our first day of advanced Google for Business, uh, we're going to be talking about Google+, Plus, which is Google's own social network. So if you don't have a web browser open yet, go ahead and open a web browser. Very briefly, let me show you what a Google Plus profile is. It's going to look very familiar because if you have, have any experience in social networks, this will look familiar. So if you go to the address google.com slash plus Mashable, M-A-S-H-A-B-L-E, I'm going to show you briefly an example of a Google Plus profile. Facebook is the biggest social network. It has, I already lost track, but it's got about 1.3 billion users worldwide. The population of the world is like 7 billion or so. So a huge portion of people in the world use Facebook. It's the biggest social network. And it's been gaining momentum, momentum, momentum. Um, Google saw that people love Facebook, use Facebook, think of Facebook as the internet. They hang out in Facebook all day long. They've got their friends, they can look at websites there, they can play games. That is a threat to Google, where Google is a search engine for when you, you can search things and find things throughout the world. But Google thought, if people are hanging out all day long, if a billion people are hanging out all day long on Facebook, that's going to decrease, to some degree, the need to use Facebook. So Google decided, let's create our own social network. So Google Plus, in short then, is Google's Facebook killer. Now, it's not going to work because Facebook has such momentum. There's been many other supposed Facebook killers. Facebook itself does so many things that almost you, you think that's dumb. I'm not going to use Facebook anymore. There's many examples of Facebook itself shooting itself in the foot, but people still come back for it just because of sheer momentum. My aunt is on it, my brother's on it, my friends are on it, why would I leave? Why would I go to Twitter? Why would I go to LinkedIn? Why would I go to Google Plus? In short, I don't think anything's gonna take down Facebook. Personally, I don't like Facebook. I don't use Facebook for friends and family, but I love Facebook for business. Definitely Facebook for business is amazing. If you take the social media class, I'd reveal all of that and how to use Facebook for business. But another good alternative social network is Google Plus because it's a Google property tied together with Google Search, YouTube, Gmail, all of these things that Google owns, they're all tied together. And so, for example, Mashable is a, is a website, mashable.com is a website about technology and social media and all that good stuff to keep up to date with the ever-changing uh, industry, but they've also got a Google Plus profile. They've got also a Twitter profile, a Facebook profile. So not just having a website is good enough nowadays. Really, you need to also be on social media. And so here on Google+, Plus, there's a statistic at the top. 5.6 million followers. You might have never heard of Google+, Plus. you might have never used Google+, Plus, but here, 5.6 million are following this account, and we can look at many other accounts. But there are people using and loving Google+. Plus. Uh, I... Uh, for me, Google Plus is my favorite social network. First place is Google Plus, second place is Twitter, then a bunch of other ones, 20th place is Facebook. Mm -hmm. But basically, I really like this for friends and family and that sort of thing. I've met so many great, fun people on Google Plus. I use it for businesses because, as I said previously, not only do I teach this, but I'm part of a company where we do this for real clients. We run Facebook for them. We run Google Plus, Google Analytics, all of that stuff. So I see it. And there's many articles coming out all the time from day one, 2011 or 12. From day one, Google Plus is dead. From day one, the pundits have always said it's dead. But no, it's got millions of users, hundreds of millions of, hundreds of millions of users, that is, uh, millions of hits per day. And it is very viable. And in this class, we'll be talking about how to use it the most viably because it's so tied into local Google search. Nowadays, when we're trying to find some business uh, nearby, I want to look up what's a good taco shop nearby. I take up my phone, I search for it, and if I write Google search, most likely it'll favor showing results from Google properties. Maybe not that Facebook link. Maybe it'll be on the first page. Maybe the Facebook link will be on the ninth slot. But maybe the Google Plus page will be on the second slot because Google owns it, 
and it's Google search, it's Google's product, um, it, they say that they don't favor their own results, but it's been shown independently that they do. Surprise! Google is going to favor showing Google properties rather than the competition. So if we know that trick that Google claims it's not doing, then we can use it to our advantage to get traffic because here's a few posts. Again, it's going to look somewhat familiar to Facebook. There's a graphic that catches your attention. There's photos and posts, articles and such. Um, then there's an activity on the posts. If you're on Facebook and you really enjoy something, how can you show that? You like it. You click the little thumbs up like. Google Plus has the same sort of concept. This is a plus one. Instead of a like, it's a plus one. And here, 24 people have plus one to this. 24 people like that. 33 plus ones. As we scroll around, it's what people like more than you full house show than winning the lottery. But if you scroll down, you will see again, 95. The suitcase of the future will follow you around like a puppy. So 95 plus ones, on and on and on. What are people liking? A Lamborghini driving into floodwaters just taught us all an important lesson. Don't drive your Lamborghini in a flood. So 126 plus ones. OK, 126 likes. Um, on Facebook, furthermore, if you really enjoy something, how else might you show that you've enjoyed it? What about if you want your friends or, or connections to know about it? You share it. Google Plus lets you share as well. This icon here is the share. Share 23 times, share 10 times, etc. If you also are apt to do, to do so, you can comment on a Facebook post on a Twitter tweet, on a Google Plus post. So it's got six comments right here. So these are the common social media interactions for all of the networks. Basically, if you think about it, on Twitter, if I like a tweet, I can, I can favorite it. I can add the little heart. I can retweet it if I want more people to see it. And I can reply to it as a comment on Twitter. Facebook, same thing. Like it, comment it, share it. Pinterest, like it, comment it, share it. All the social networks now have those basic three interactions. And in short, the value of that, because people then always ask, well, who cares about a like or a retweet or a comment? What, is that? what does that mean? What does that do? Yeah, it strokes my ego that what I posted gave me 100 likes, but who cares? What does it do? What it does is, is up to you in the sense that how are you using social media? Usually, you're going to use social media as a marketing platform, advertising, to reach an audience that cares about your product or your brand, your nonprofit organization, your paintings, your resume, whatever. A, an audience that would care because it's marketing. When you go to your mailbox, your real mailbox, um, where, the, where the letter carrier puts out the, the mail, and you get your bundle of, of mail for the day, and some of it is bills, and some of it is real mail, and some of it is junk mail, you're probably going to get that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon, like everyone does. Well, I get that coupon, and when I get it, I put it in the recycle bin. I don't really need it. I don't, I don't use it. So when my mom gets it, she uses it. Bed Bath & Beyond paid thousands of dollars to get that coupon designed, printed, delivered, and the result for me was I threw it away. From my mom, she used it. She not only used the minimum amount to claim that 20%, she spent a little bit more. So the return on investment for Bed Bath & Beyond for my mother was much higher than for me, but it still cost the same thousands of dollars to get it to me and I threw it away. Question? I'm sorry, I, can you go ahead really quick? That triangle under next to the comment, what is that, that icon? What does that mean? This one with the little yeah, that. share. That's a share. Okay, thank you. So the return on investment of Bed Bath & Beyond for me was very low, but very high for my mother. But they still spent that money, real money. Social media can be that coupon, can be that ad. That tweet doesn't cost you anything. That post on Google Plus doesn't cost you anything. On Facebook, etc. You can, you can use social media to reach an audience, especially that cares about your message because when someone follows you on Google Plus or Facebook or Twitter 
that's basically implicit an implicit action that they want to be marketed to and therefore the return on investment of what you post on social media could be higher than simply sending out that ad on everyone in that zip code so in short and obviously if you take the social media class we go into more detail but in short social media is valuable for all businesses because it's a way to reach an audience that really cares about your product, your brand, your nonprofit, your charity, whatever it is you've got online. If you're trying to get a job as a, if you're trying to get clients as, as a realtor, again, this is where you would find that potential audience to buy that house. So we're going to use then Google Plus, the social network with hundreds of millions of users. Um, to reach this audience to also do you ever see that when you do a Google search and let's say taco shop near me we might get a map the Google Plus local business result could show up like this I'm more apt to click on one of these taco shops that has a picture and their star rating and such than one of these other ones that looks like a plain old link and you can get this kind of preference with a Google Plus page this might not happen automatically but to make sure that you've got one of these kinds of pages this is a Google Plus page this is a profile that you can create for free from Google Plus, which is what we're going to do in a bit. So especially if you've got a, lo a local business and you want to appear like this, you want to spend some time in creating that Google Plus presence. It oftentimes nowadays though is it is creating one for you, but if you want access to it to control it, to put your proper company logo and your opening times and what about if you get a bad review you want to deal with bad reviews that means you need to have access you need to claim your business on Google Plus so that's what we'll be talking about there's many other examples that I can show you but this is the big one that I that I show um, we're gonna create this right now and uh, unfortunately this is always when we get to this little bit of difficulty in teaching this because this is going to depend on on you um, if if we go to the web address let's go up to the address simply plus dot google dot com plus dot google dot com We've got a little blurb here, and then we've got sign in at the top right or join Google+. Plus. This is where it's a little complicated, a little speed bump at the beginning, and then it's smoother after that. The problem is I cannot show you step-by-step -step how to create the Google Plus account at the very beginning because everyone is going to be on, on a different page. If you've already got a Gmail account, for example, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to create the Google+. Plus. Because again, Gmail, Google+, YouTube, all of these things are, are owned by Google. And so if you've already got Gmail, you can click Sign In and it'll give you a few steps. If you don't have Gmail, we'll have to go through Join Google+, and I can't go through that because I've already created so many accounts and I've used up all my email addresses. I can't show that either. So what we'll do is we'll take a quick pause. I'll pause my recorder and I'll give us maybe five minutes or so to either sign in or click join so that we can create an account and then we'll proceed from that if you're having any trouble call me over but that's what we want to do first that is if you want to do this aspect you can do it at home of course um, if you're not comfortable logging in and such but let's take a few minutes to either log in to sign in or to join and then we'll go on